So, high belts in style this year, huh? Hello! I'm the Super Scroll, and I may have trouble picking one power at a time, but I have no trouble picking where I put my pre-orders in. Get all your cool action figures at Dorkside Toys. Okay people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Fantastic Four Super Scroll series. Super Scroll sells seashells down by the sheets here or... Now it seems like they just announced this wave, so <laughs> it's kind of crazy to be already getting it. I think it was originally announced for January. Here it is. December. <laughs> I think the new Spider-Man series is trickling out. We've already heard of a couple of more Marvel Legends series after this. It's just going to be another avalanche for the next few months. A plastic avalanche. So what the hell am I gropping about? The series consists of Human Torch, Invisible Woman, The Thing, Doctor Doom, Mr. Fantastic, and then Hulk, which I guess She-Hulk took over for Bruce at some point when he was dead or away or I don't know. I guess I, someday I need to catch up on comics when I have loads of loads of time but it's jennifer in kind of a gray green look ripped up clothes and then of course the build figure is super scroll i miss the happy wanted poster shots on the side we get some neato art of each of the characters reed looking pretty good in his beard on the back pretty promotional shots of each character a bio for each <laughs> Dang, the thing's heavy. On the bottom, legalese, a bunch of warnings, and don't put them in your mouth in any country. So I'm gonna get these open and see what's going on here. Let's start out with Mr. Fantastic. And getting it in hand, I, I have no attachment to this costume whatsoever, but I kind of dig the colors, and I like how it's not just the old costume with the colors reversed or something. There's an angle to the belt part, or well, at least the painted on belt part. Have these chevrons on the back of the arm right here, these lines running up the back. The belt just doesn't run straight across. There's actually a little bit of design back there. The gloves aren't just a straight line. It comes up and around. There's black running through, and there's some kind of stitch look to the knuckles. The boots are set down at an angle, and then, even though this is complete reuse, of the previous Mr. Fantastic from Walgreens, we do get new boots here to make him just a little bit taller. It's not much at all though. These little, get out of the way, Reed. These little nubs on the heels, that's about all the height you get out of it. But the body overall works well for Reed because, I, I don't know, it's a little bit less detailed to the chest here. It gives it kind of a rubbery look. And then the kind of thinness to the limbs works too. The Fantastic Four is really nicely tampoed on. But then there is the head. I am getting terrible when it comes to reuse, when it comes to heads or hair. It, it, there's just too much out there. So I don't think this is reuse of anything. It shares the cocky slash inquisitive eyebrow from the Walgreens Mr. Fantastic, but there is a beard sculpt here and the hair is different too. In early promotional shots, I thought, oh, that beard looks weird just painted on, but nope, there is actual hair sculpt here. It's just unfortunate that the paint job kind of just <laughs> disregards the sculpt altogether. It would have been better if it kind of blended from beard to skin, but instead it's just a the eyebrow also misses just a little bit. When I look at the overall look because of the gray, it matches up to what we're used to seeing on his hair. So it's a little bit more distinguished look for Reed. Articulation wise, it's your standard Marvel Legends setup. There's a hinge at the neck going up to a ball in the head. Can look up, buries the chin. Not much tilt though, swivel. Arm hinges up, around, bicep swivel, double elbow, eh, not bad at all. Little paint smudge there. I also noticed one down here. Hinge at the wrist, swivel. Hinge at the torso goes forward, arcs back, swivel at the waist. Ball coming out to the hip goes all the way up. Back, out, not great, but not bad. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, boop. Can kick his own, well, upper ass at least. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, oh, not bad at all. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Mr. Fantastic comes with two fists, but those pull out fairly easy and he comes with these stretchy finger hands which i guess is an okay use of his power but it seems kind of cheap i guess there's only so much you can do with hands and it would be the easiest point to swap out but i like the walgreens reed stretched arm so much but i guess it's okay it's better than nothing how about that height wise mr fantastic stands at about six and a quarter inches tall and then here he is with the walgreens mr fantastic and an older hasbro version which I'm a complete sucker for. You can't get much more representative of his power than this. Next up, let's take a look at Human Torch. And I'll say it again, I do like this costume. I like that they made Johnny a different body, but what more am I gonna say? I'm gonna go over the design elements again. The costumes do match up perfectly. They did make Johnny quite a bit buffer than Reed. And unfortunately for you scale sticklers, they are the exact same height again. But I do like this base body, the Sunflower. Sunflower. 
I'm done. I'm out. I'm retiring. The Sunfire slash Bullseye slash whatever else they've used it on. It's a good body. It may be a little bit thick for Johnny, but I do love the butterfly shoulders. And they've also replaced the duck feet with the same boots as Reed with the soles on bottom. All the lines are pretty crisp when you get them lined up, but you can also see some bleeding here. And the blue seems a little bit thin, seeing the black through just a bit. Also a little bit here and here. But again, well, one thing that does bug me, the blue of the Fantastic Four logo doesn't match the blue of the costume. Costume, which I guess is okay, but actually it makes it stand out a little bit more. So, oh, never mind. I'm okay with it. I was going to grab, but forget about it. And then the head, again, I'm not sure if this is reuse or not, but if it is, I, I don't notice it. He's got a cocky little smirk to him, like Johnny should have. The eyes have a metallic blue that gives them a kind of a realistic look, but staying within that comic realm. Then the hair is a very nice sculpt. It's got the right coloring. I like the wash just to bring out a little bit of detail. It works for me. And for those wondering, the head does pop off fairly easy. You can pop it onto the Walgreens Human Torch body, but if you pop it all the way on, he goes without a neck. But it fits perfectly fine onto the Walgreens Mr. Fantastic in case you want to make a powered down older school Johnny Storm. Articulation, there's a smaller hinge in the neck with a ball going up into the head. You can look up, you look down. Oh, pitiful tilt. But you get swivel. Butterfly joint goes forward, goes back, all the way. Hinge, rotates, bicep at the swivel. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow, not quite as much range as what we're used to seeing with double elbow. There's just not enough cutout in the bicep. Hinge at the wrist. Swivel, hinge of the torso, clicks forward, arcs back, swivel at the waist, kind of breaks up the belt. I meant to mention that with Mr. Fantastic too, but it's just the design element. Ball at the hip comes ooh, up past 90. Back, out. We got to start working on this, Hasbro. I mean, really. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, not quite. <laughs> that is nothing to scoff at, though. Hinge of the ankle goes back all the way. Forward, very nice. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, you can pop out the two fists. These are a little bit tighter than Reed, but not bad. He comes with these two spiraling flames. I think those are to go over the forearm. And then it comes with alternate hands that just pop in. I'm not sure if there's a left and a right to these, but what the hell. <laughs> Be artistic. Do what you want. On the left side, he has a splayed out hand. On the right, he has a fist. And that looks good together. He's just barely torching up. And then he comes with this bigger flame piece, which actually goes to super scroll. But if you really, really want to, you can pop that on his arm for some kind of heavy flame Nova effect or something. Oop, completely missed it. There is a shin swivel too. Johnny also stands at about six and a quarter inches tall. And here he is with the previous Walgreens Human Torch and then an older Hasbro Human Torch. I like this effect, the paint, the how it's clear. It looks cool, but man, that's a shitty body. Next up, let's look at Invisible Woman. <laughs> and you're going to get tired of me saying, well, here's this costume again, just on a different body. But that's what it is. It's that new style Fantastic Four costume, but this time on a female body. Same design work, same lines, same blue, same black, same belt, same points on the outside of the boots, but unfortunately also the same uh, kind of downfalls of the paint on Johnny and Reed. The blue is just a little bit thin in places, and then some of the lines may not be as sharp as they could be. But she does get these boots that match Reed and Johnny, so that's cool. Uniform all the way across. And she gets the usual fist and open hand that females do, but because of the packaging, her fingers are a little bit just warped up. Woo! Wait a second. The big thing here is Sue's head. And again, <laughs> I don't know. It may be reuse of the previous Sue, but the hair does look different. But I really like the hair. It's very dynamic, but it's not swooping. It's not flying away like it's in the wind or some kind of power effect. It still kind of sticks up in places. It doesn't lay completely naturally, but until they invent plastic that acts like hair, uh, we're going to have to run into that problem. And then like Johnny, it's the base color. Wash on top, brings out the detail very nicely. What's this big seam? It's like a separate piece right here. I'm sure it was done for mold purposes in China to get it out of the steel, but it's just very apparent right there. Articulation, there is a hinge at the top of the neck going up into a ball. But because of the hair, it gets in the way. you got to kind of shift around. You can get her looking a little bit up. All the way down, though. All the family fantastic just doesn't have a lot of tilt. Swivel. Arm hinges up. Swivels around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to just 90, unfortunately. But then that swivels. Hinge. Swivel. Ball joint at the torso. Pretty good range. Ball at the hip comes up all the way. Back. Out. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, 
Bing! Hinge of the ankle goes back, goes forward, and forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, she comes with this invisible force field shield. And really, it's a clear piece of plastic with a hand mold in it, but I feel like this is a good representation of her power. Don't need anything fancy. Hell, in the comics, half the time you can't even see it. it hence, invisible. <laughs> but if it were visible, I, I'm okay with this. That's where this funky hand comes into play. That open slot right there, you fit the fingers in, and then it just kind of molds to the hand. And like I said, I think it looks good. It's a nice little representation of her power. And then stays on fairly well. I'll admit, I was shaking pretty hard. A little bit of heel to her foot, so takes a little bit of balance, but not too terrible. But because of those high heels, Sue stands at about six and three eighths, which is just barely a little bit taller than the invisible woman from Walgreens. And then here's Electra, just for the pure hell of it, because I couldn't find any of the older invisible woman's. Next up, <laughs> we got the thing. Okay, if you have the previous version of Thing from Walgreens, you know exactly what is going on here. It's a big brick of a figure with semi-decent articulation, an excellent sculpt, but there are some changes this time around. Look at the sculpt. It's, it's just awesome. It's not flat. It's not uniform, which I feel like it shouldn't be. It's a pile of rocks that is in thing form, and I'm completely happy with that. Again, the colors come in to match the uniform of the other three we've already looked at, but we do get this unique separate belt this time around. Very simple. It's just a belt, but it comes down at an angle right here, and the Fantastic Four logo is actually sculpted in there. Also, like I said, it's a separate piece, and it is not glued down, so you could raise it up to where it's supposed to be, you could bring it down, or if you're looking for a more old school thing, you can take it off, do some painting, boom. But when we get to the paint job, it's orange, it has some highlight on it, but it doesn't really match the previous version of Thing. The base plastics may be the same, but because the Walgreens thing has a wash in the crevices, the cracks, it has a darker color, it looks more natural here. The new Thing doesn't have that, and then on top of it, has this orange overspray on the high points. Anything that looks like where the light would be shining straight down on it. It's just up here, across the shoulders, across the chest, top of the head, top of the jaw, outside of the forearms, and then top of the feet. Nothing on the legs. So I get the effect they were going for here, but it could have been blended a little bit better. Get up to the head though, and it's a different sculpt than what we saw with the Walgreens thing. We got a more prominent brow right here, more prominent jaw. It's a bit more 80s looking, I feel. This is like the cover of Marvel 2-in-1, I think. Looking closely, we get to probably my biggest disappointment with this figure. I like the sculpt, I like the size, I like the articulation, I like how it sits on the shelf, but man, let's get some light on that. The left eye actually misses the sculpt. This one's pretty good, it's set right, it looks like how it should, this one's drifting away. He's kind of slothing it up, especially when you look at it dead straight on. Thankfully, the brow is a little bit thick, so it hides it a little bit when you put them in action poses. I'm either going to track another one of these down or I do some repainting myself because I'd like to see the whole thing, get it thing, <laughs> repainted in more of the Walgreens colors. Because while the head pops off, pop it onto the Walgreens body and it just kind of sticks out. It's a different shade. And that is a lot of griping, but... Overall, if I do find one where the eye is right, this is my favorite thing hit, I think. Articulation, there is a hinge at the neck, ball in the head, can look up, looks down, not bad. Ah, that's where the tilt's been hiding. Swivel, arm hinges up, rotates around, hinges swivel at the elbow, unfortunately doesn't quite make 90. Does swivel though. Hinge at the wrist, also rotates. Kind of a dumbbell joint in the torso, I think you can crunch forward, arc back, but it gaps up a little bit. Swivels at that point, ball at the hip comes forward, back out, is that the best of the team so far? Eh, not quite. There's swivel at the shorts. Double knee? No way, right? Oh, well, damn close though. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward a little bit, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, uh, that's it. Height-wise, thing stands at seven and a quarter inches tall. Here he is with the Walgreens thing. Again, same body, just different head, added belt. And then a previous Hasbro thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. It's a hard choice between Doom and She-Hulk, but let's look at Hulk next. Like the costumes on the Fantastic Four, I don't know this iteration of Jennifer. I don't know why she's gray. I don't know why she has these green splotch stripes, cuts, whatever. Her pants are very Pinterest, and then her shirt is just barely there. But I do like the overall look, and I especially like how the figure just looks powerful. It's a little bit exaggerated, but it has good muscle tone. The limbs are long. She's appropriately tall. It feels like a She-Hulk. The pants have a sculpted denim look to them. It's nice and textured, and then, well, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. I don't think there's a paint wash on it, 
but it is shinier than the skin, so uh, there's something there. And then the shirt is actually a separate piece, but this is all sculpted together, so don't, don't get pervy on me. One thing to watch out for, the ankles are very tight. I don't know if it's heavy detents or if there was something else stuck in there, but I had to heat those up work those to get those loose. And then the left hand hinge, I still haven't gotten able to break loose, so it's kind of stuck in an out position. Well, I don't know. It's kind of straight. The head follows that same look for the rest of the body. It's gray, it's green, it's nicely painted. It looks very, very angry, which I guess is appropriate for a Hulk. But like I talked about with Sue not having windswept in the air power use hair, when it comes to Jennifer, she does have it flying out to the side, which is okay. Again, it's dynamic. It adds something to the figure, but you're not going to get an at ease pose. Considering who it is, she's always ready to kick ass, so I guess it's okay. There is a nice wash to the hair, again, to bring out the detail. Lighter green, darker green. Articulation, there's a hinge at the neck. I would, I'm assuming a ball up in the head but because of the hair you can't get much higher than that can bury the chin all the way though a little bit not much though swivel arm hinges up rotates around hinge and swivel at the bicep nice to see but we also get a hinge and swivel at the elbow it's a plastic kind of sticks out right there but at the same time i think that's what allows it to come up rotate into the forearm and get you extra articulation and that does rotate but it kind of runs into the back of the arm right there hinge at the wrist swivel ball joint in the torso pretty good range except forward there's not a lot of crunch and then that rotates ball at the hip comes up back out thigh cut rotates it's not completely hidden but i like how it rides the jeans on both sides double knee oh not quite she's just too muscular hinge at the ankle goes all the way back very nice forward i'm liking this way for forward ankles if that's, that can be considered forward facing pin for rocker for accessories she comes with two fists those pop out and then she comes with two open angry hands I, I, I'm not quite sure if she catches you she gonna kick your ass height wise she stands at about seven and an eighth I don't have the a4 she hulk so I don't have that for comparison but I do have an older she hulk and then red she hulk and then as far as carded figures go let's finish it off with dr. doom and oh my god I cannot tell you how much I think this may be, well, I can't say figure of the year, but it's in my top five, and I've only been messing with this for 30 minutes, an hour or so. It is damn amazing. First up, the sculpt work. Man, the texture on the tunic, the little details on the belt, the ornate look to the buckle, and then this strap coming across the front of the cape. Look at the D engraved on the holster flap. The overall look, I think, is inspired by the old Sideshow statue. I remember seeing that at San Diego Comic-Con thinking, man, that's a badass look for Doom. It's like old school armor with the straps and everything, the pointy boots. You can see a hint of chainmail underneath in places. Even on the inside of the bicep right there, you can see the straps holding the armor together. And then on the outside, you get rivets and seams all the way around. Even the elbow looks to be armored. It has this extra plate that hides the elbow on bottom. And the same thing at the knee. It looks like it comes out and around, but it's essentially just a double joint with kneecap part coming out and about. I think it uses the marbleized plastic in places you can kind of see some swirl and some twirl, but it's not so apparent as other armored characters we get. And then there's a smoothness, a shininess that just ups the metal factor tenfold. I mean, you look at it and think, this is made out of some kind of alloy, isn't it? It's not. It's plastic, but it's amazing looking. On the back, under the cape, there are the jet packs. And then the head in the package isn't quite as old school as some people may prefer, but it matches the rest of the armor. You can see inside the mouth right there, it has that doom look to it with the extra geometric shape. Come here, light. We're going to hit you heavy. The eyes have an orange sparkly kind of magical color to them. And then this hood engulfs the head perfectly. It's the right depth where you don't have the light on it. It's shadowy. It's villainy. It looks amazing. And then it hangs down and lays naturally on the chest. Unfortunately, the cape, as good as it looks, is a big hunk of kind of thick plastic. There's a peg in the back that plugs in. And when you have it plugged in, it stays in place fairly well, but you can tell where it's come off. And I've already broke this chain right here. That was from me pushing and prodding and changing parts and this and that. I just need a little bit of glue, but that is a little bit fragile. So watch it whenever you pull the cape out, it pulls back against the neck. It just stretches too far. Look for a cloth option there, but I sure as hell am gonna use those on whatever cloth cape I do eventually end up with. This angle was very, very stuck out of the package. I just heated it up, worked it until it came loose. On top of the beautiful look, 
the way they did the articulation here oh man. <laughs> for a character that's in a suit of armor with a tunic over it as silly as that may be they made him move all over the place there is a ball joint at the top of the neck the hood kind of gets in the way but oddly enough you pull it out and this started happening to me and at first I thought oh I screwed this up there's actually a ball joint at the bottom of the neck that goes into the torso and to switch that out which we'll see here in a minute you pop that out so the neck is a complete separate piece you have your hinge you have your ball joint you have your another big old ball joint it is a little bit hard to move down it in there and if you overextend it you're gonna pop the neck out it's almost like they kind of accounted for the hood getting in the way so you do get down up there's just too much stuff in the way you do get explodey doom let's leave the cape off for a minute some tilt again cape running into the hood swivel the arm hinges well hell up rotates around swivel at the bicep elbow very nice range for an armored character hinge swivel ball joint at the waist and you get a hell of a lot of movement there if you go too far it does try to catch on the belt in the back same thing happens at the front you come down you're gonna bust into the buckle just push back a little bit Boop. that also swivels the belt does ride a little bit high but the lower tunic is split at the sides but the holster comes down plugs into this side so it kind of works against itself still though you can bring it up the hip comes up to there back out are you kidding me doom has the best out oh you can see more of that male look under there the swivel is hidden behind the thigh armor and again more buckles more details even though you can't even see them when this is down double knee oh so close i mean if there was just a little bit more clearance back there the angle set up kind of like taskmaster where there is a swivel above the hinge but then below the hinge you get the foot back forward again impressive and then forward facing pin for rocker for accessories hidden in the holster is doom's pistol there's a peg you bring it out it's a little bit rubbery so the barrel kind of bends inside the holster but pretty good doom has two fists like the rest of the figures in this wave they pop out you get a right hand with a trigger finger it fits beautifully and then you get a left hand that is so unmistakably doom you can pop the head off the neck let's put the cape back on for dramatic effect and then pop the alternate head on and with that you get a much more classic looking doom the hood doesn't drape as realistically as the other one but it has more of a 80s kind of feel to it you get more distinct with the geometric shape in the mouth very doom like and then you get rivets around each of the holes through the mask it doesn't match the rest of the armor stylistically but that's 80 percent classic doom so look at that even with the big heavy cape doom stands at about six and three quarter inches to the top of his hood which is bigger than reed and slightly larger than the older hasbro doom i did shiny this up back when i first got it but i always felt like the articulation was outdated a little bit this new one fixes that completely okay i forgot to hit the record button when i started building the super scroll but i highly suggest heating up the legs the thigh part of it before plugging them on because those are tight as hell whereas the arms pop right on and then for the head hopefully it's fairly easy to put on because there's two of them and looking at that it's a big buff scroll and for those wondering it does use at least the limbs of hyperion new chest though because it has this overlay like nightcrawler implemented really well though i like how it comes out and it looks like one complete torso but then for likeness hey it's a scroll sometimes they have bigger ears sometimes they don't they're shape shifters but this is how i see scrolls in my head with the chin and then the ears and then the green otherwise it's just a blank body really looks good with the two shades of purple though or is that a blue or is that a black i don't know. there's your hinge there's your ball it goes up goes down doom got all the tilt swivel hinges up very tight though swivel double elbow torso crunches whoa way forward way back swivel hip back out double knee oh no can't kick his scroll ass boot swivel ankle forward tilt he has this head that pops off he also comes with this hey I just destroyed the Fantastic Four. Smiling cocky head. Kind of paint missing right there, but it still looks good. If you want to try it on other bodies just as a generic scroll or something. Oh, actually, is that going to pop? It pops on there. And while it's big, again, shapeshifter. It may be a little bit big. And then the arms should just pull out. You have alternate arms that represent Fantastic Four powers. There's the stretch invisible arm. Come out of there boy i'm not putting those back in once these go in these are staying and then you have the thing arm and that's what the fire that came with johnny goes on a little bit stiff hard to get on there that should stay not bad 
I kind of wish this arm came with Reed, though. I'd like a stretchy arm with a big hand. All four powers perfectly represented. Still looks very scroll like though. Very old school with the costume, too. Heightwise Clerk stands... <laughs> I guess that's how you say it. I don't know. He stands at six and three quarters, which is shorter than the old Toy Biz Super Scroll, but... <laughs> Whoa, you've been riding too many horses, buddy. But it's a much more cleaner look, a more classic look. But it's right in line with the height of Doom. And then more wave mates. It's a pretty good size. Yeah, it's a Build-A-Figure that's not quite as big as some of the figures that came in the wave, but at the same time, it's a good Build-A-Figure. Unless you're wanting to army build those. And then here is the family together. It's crazy that all three of these are the exact same height, but it works. They have different body types at least. So at the end of the day, for not being the biggest Fantastic Four fan in the world, I really like this Fantastic Four wave. Once again, I have no connection whatsoever to these costumes for the team, but I like the colors and the designs enough to consider this... <laughs> I'm almost to the point where this may be my Fantastic Four on the shelf. Basic figures, but getting them all four at the same time, I can't beat that. Thing will need a repaint, or I'll have to find another one with some straight eyes. But I, we already know the Thing figure was good in the first place. These modifications they've made to it, I like them. I like the belt even. Hulk or She-Hulk, it's a good, big, powerful female body. Nothing to complain about there. I even like this look, but it does make me want a good classic, oh well, even in a Fantastic Four costume, She-Hulk. The Build-A-Figure Super Scroll, it serves its purpose. It is a good classic rendition of that character. I like how each of the powers are represented without being overly... well, okay. I would take an action figure of him stretched at the torso, one leg on fire, one leg rock, one arm invisible, another arm stretched. But as is on the shelf, this will work without taking all kinds of crazy room. But I think my favorite has to be Doctor Doom. It was just meant to be, because when I saw it at San Diego Comic Con, I thought, shit, Doctor Doom may not be my favorite villain, but that's a damn good looking action figure. But not only is it a good looking action figure, it's a fully functional action figure. Sure, I have to glue the chain back together, but that's my own fault from getting too rowdy with it. And hell, like I said, I'm still considering switching out the cape to cloth just to make things a lot easier all the way around. But the figure itself, oh, I can't say enough good things about it. There is all kinds of hidden stuff up in there. It's awesome. What can I say? If you skip this wave altogether and are looking for just one figure to get, get Doctor Doom. There's no question about it. If you have only $20, get Doctor Doom. Doom. That's all. <laughs> Grab him. Do not pass him up. Do not pass go. Grab Doom. Once again, thanks to Dorkside Toys for sending these over to me. If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much love to the plus. Thank you for all your support. If you're not aware, all reviews go up early on the Foosh Patreon. But most of all, wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Foosh.